Good afternoon, everyone. 5.30 on a Thursday. Um, it's great to be here and welcome to all of you that are signing in. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about crate training your puppy or your dog. And, um, and in the title of the video, I put yes or no. And um, I happened to go on to Google um, to have a look at crate training. And the first thing that came up was a sponsored ad by PETA. So, you know, people for the ethical treatment of animals. And it was a very emotional post about how bad um, crating was for dogs. So what I want to bring to everyone's attention today, hygiene, um, is the pros and cons or the yeses and the nos and the do's and don'ts of crate training your dog or your puppy. Okay, because I do, from my perspective, I have seen um, it is a very useful tool to, um, to assist and particularly if any of you saw the comment or the photograph from one of our clients, Jennifer Lees, she um, posted a picture of her Rottweiler Rucker lying in his crate. The door is open. He, um, he's had very, very um, intensive and extensive surgery. And um, it's my belief that if he was not crate trained, his recovery would not have been as successful as it has been. And it's because he was comfortable in there and he was able to cope with the um, the confinement that was necessary to allow his body to heal okay and to prevent him from injuring himself he was almost his hind limbs were completely paralyzed um, and he couldn't move and if he had access to the entire house uh, or even to a room it is he's a very very big dog it is highly likely that he could have injured those legs and been in a worse position and so I do think that there is a place for um, for crating or crate training and so we're going to look at that okay hello Eileen um, great I agree so let's just look at you know what is crate training and it's the process of introducing your puppy or your dog to an indoor kennel or a crate and um, and the the introduction is such that the dog sees this as a safe and a familiar place so it's his home it's his den in fact dogs um, come from wolves and they all den they all have this behavior to live and move in the den and if you've watched any um, any bitches that when they're whelping or just prior to whelping you know they have this denning behavior okay and so when you bring your puppy home to provide him with a space that is his own where he knows he's not going to be um, uh, he knows he's not going to be interrupted it's his place I think um, is a good thing and it's of great benefit to the mental and um, well-being of your dog uh, despite what um, what a certain welfare organizations might say so it makes use of the dog's natural instinct to seek a den or to use a den so I think what we really have to look at in terms of using a crate is it is a tool to um, enhance the safety of your dog. Uh, in puppies, it can be used as a um, as a uh, house training um, um, mechanism. So let me just go back. Let me just say the 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 issues with crate with crating a dog for me lie in if the dog. It is not there for you to close your dog in the crate when you go to work. And for eight hours or 10 hours or 12 hours, some of us work really, really long days, he stays in the crate. That is an absolute no-go. Okay, it is also not there as a punishment. This, um, this area is his den. It's his safe place. Um, and he should never be punished in there. And he should never be sent there as a punishment okay so these things are are very very important in terms of using this area and this behavior as a positive okay so yes I absolutely agree if the dog is going to lie in a crate in which he can turn around and stand up and nothing else um, for that length of time then um, then I agree it is cruel and it is a form of confinement um, yeah Eileen thanks we'll talk about the size in a moment 
Um, okay, so so why uh, why do we use it? I mean, just to come back to his safe place, my um, my brother and sister in law um, had a very 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 busy household. They had six kids, and um, and they got a bull mastiff crossed with an English mastiff. And they knew he was going to be a very, very big dog. And um, and he had a space in the kitchen. It wasn't a crate, but it was um, it was a box. It just didn't have a door on it. And he had three toddlers at the time when the puppy came. And they made it very, very clear that that crate or that bed or that sort of box was the dog's area. And that... He had a right to defend it and the children were not allowed to climb in there and they were not allowed to encroach on his space. And in fact, there were times when I was there where I saw him reprimand the children like a any adult dog, a well-socialized adult dog will reprimand a puppy. They kind of like look and maybe lift the lip a little. Maybe there's a low rumble. The puppy understands that. It's not aggression. It's like, this is my space. This is my boundary. I'm sorry. You don't belong here. And so he, although it wasn't crating in the sense that we're talking now, in fact, he had a den and he knew it was his and that got reinforced positively by the members of the family. Okay, so so crate training and crating is very similar in that respect. So it can be used to house train your puppy. And that is because of the denning behavior, the pups are going to be less inclined to eliminate in their sleeping area. And so that brings us then to the size of the crate, because when you get your puppy, the crate should be large enough that he can get up, move around um, and not be forced into a cramped position but not so large that he can find an area in the in the crate in which he can um, urinate or defecate. And so the question, and then the question is, okay, so we have to buy a small crate for a puppy and a big crate for when he's an adult. And no, you can buy a crate that is going to be an appropriate size for him when he's an adult, and you can, um, you can cordon it off. Or you can fill up a part of that crate space when he's a puppy so that that behavior doesn't happen. Um, and having said that, no, um, no pee pads or newspaper or anything in the crates because then you are creating conflict. Then he's going to have something there that he thinks he can pee on and then it's not what you want. Okay, so it is used to house train um, puppies. It's also used to pre prevent destructive behavior. And so when you're teaching your dog that this is a safe place. We make use of toys, anything that's going to keep him um, occupied uh, and positively channel the teething behavior or, or the behavior that you don't want. Um, it also, if, if you are not able to supervise your puppy, and let's be honest, puppies can get themselves into some very tricky and dangerous situations if left unsupervised. And so if he is comfortable in his crate and you have to go out or you can't, you know, you have to do a Zoom meeting and you can't, um, you can't watch him, then if he's comfortable in his crate for 30 minutes, then he's, he's going to lie there and he's going to settle and he's going to have his toys and we'll talk about what goes in a crate. Um, so um, it becomes a positive space for him. So it, it, it could be safety, okay? Um, it stops him from getting into trouble. It becomes a refuge. And for dogs that are afraid of noises or maybe are a little timid, um, at least they know that there is a space um, to which they can go and they will be safe. Um, and then once the animals, once the dogs grow older, um, it's very easy if your dog is crate trained, it's very easy if you need to, um, to transport him because now your dog can move very nicely into the crate and then you can close the doors and it is a safe way of transporting your dog in a in a vehicle. And the other thing, as I've mentioned already, is post-operatively or post-injury. So when we look at Raka, he, his, his success post-operative was partly due to the fact that he was accustomed to being in a crate and the other part of it was that he had a very... Um, a very pedantic mom who made sure that she followed instruction to the letter so that her precious baby could recover. Um, 
So let's look at what type of crates or how what do they you know how how do we find them so you know um they could be wooden they could be plastic they could be wire um they could be metal uh well wire and metal the same thing so so yes um any one of those uh and then we've spoken about the size so just be certain that it's not it's not going to be too large that you're going to get the unwanted behavior and then it's like how do you do it so from the start i must again reiterate i'm a vet i'm not a trainer and i'm not a behaviorist okay but there are some rules um hi jennifer there are some rules to follow when teaching your puppy or your dog about his space and his crate So first of all do put blankets and soft things and comfortable things in there. I mean I don't want to go and sleep in a place where I don't have my comforts. Um look for warmth particularly with puppies. Um I like the idea of music playing in the background. Where do you position it? Okay, so you want you you don't want to put it in a part of the house where your puppy's going to be isolated because he wants to be with the family. You're his new family. So you can't put him you can't put the crate in a place that's in the laundry and in the rest of the family sitting in the lounge so usually not in a high traffic area but in a room in which the family spends a lot of time but in an out of the way space so i saw some really really brilliant photographs of custom made um crates on the internet so you should go look for them uh, under the central pieces in the kitchen you know when you've got a central like hob or or workspace the crate is there underneath there instead of having drawers for your kitchen utensils so there's some really um there's some really cool ideas and then the dog um the dog is in the family okay but you're not going to trip over him with a, a pot of uh, hot food or something um thanks yanka for that so um cope international has a guide on their website which is really great um we do want water in there very often with the young puppies um they they can whine a little they can cry a little when you're introducing it first of all just let him walk in and out throw some snacks in there put a favorite toy in there you know this is a place that he's going to want to go into you're not going to throw him in there and shut the door and leave okay so just be aware of how you're introducing it and what your long term aim is with the crate um let him have daytime naps in there with the door open and as Eileen said earlier and don't interrupt his sleep okay if he's going to go in there and he's going to sleep yes you're on the way because he's now already made the connection that this place is a safe place and I can go there for a time out so very often I'm a firm believer that puppies need rest just like children should have an afternoon nap not that I had any of my own but um uh i i i do believe that puppies need a break and particularly if there's an older dog um that doesn't allow them a break if the puppy has a safe area into which it can go and the big dog is not allowed it's a really really good way of creating that balance and calm so that's the other thing the crate does is it it teaches your your puppy and your dog to move into a calm state and a relaxed state and and you might for those of you who have jack russell terriers or really wind up dogs you might think that that's not what you want um i have met a couple of um belgian shepherds that are working dogs that in their early years early months when they were being trained they were not allowed to relax and i believe that we are seeing um negative mental effects from not allowing those dogs to relax nobody ever taught them to switch off and now they don't know how to switch off and and it's unhealthy for them in my opinion and maybe we'll talk about that somewhere else along the line um use chew toys use um and please when your puppy goes in no harnesses no collars no choke chains or check chains none of you use choke chains nothing that is going to actually be able to hook onto the crates and strangle him in your absence okay it it can happen in the blink of an eye so just be very aware of that you can feed him in the crate and then gradually you're going to the first time you close the door don't move out of the room so he can still see you but he can't get to you and then close the door and leave the room and come back in 30 seconds so there are there the these instructions you can find on the internet and if you are taking your puppy to 
um, to puppy school, which I hope you are, or if you're also signing up to our puppy fitness course, which starts next week, which I also hope you are, then um, then this is then there are um, these should be covered in more detail than what I'm able to do right now, and you will have someone that is able to walk you through the process. Oh, this is happening. What do I do now? Okay, never, never, never reprimand your dog inside his crate. Never ever. Okay, so oh, the and the other thing that you could use um, is pheromones or dog appeasing pheromones, DAP. Um, plugins and and um, like good boy collars so that pheromone um, is what the the dam what the mother actually secretes when the puppies are drinking milk so pheromone is a molecule that works on the sense of smell uh, and we all know that dog sense of smell is very acute um, way 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 more sensitive than ours and so you by having this permeating in the room or on the dog in the form of a collar not that you want him to have the collar in the crate um, but you get plugins this will assist to um, keeping your dog calm and um, and the transition in fact I think they're a really good idea for new puppies um, when you introduce them to your home Okay, um, be very cautious also with the positioning that um, in, in, uh, in northern hemispheres, not near radiators or heaters or central heating units um, in, in South Africa, make sure there's not a breeze. Look for, you know, if you have air conditioners in your house, look for where the air con blows. I mean, don't want that wind blowing on your dog. So just be aware and also be aware that you don't want it in a place where the dog can access an electrical cable, something that it can chew, um, a plant, a, uh, um, something like a palm or whatever. I mean, uh, it's amazing what they can what they can actually um, get their teeth onto. So just be aware of all of these things. So um, yeah, I think. That's pretty much all I've got to say. You've all added some wonderful comments here. Um, no spill water bowls, large parrot bowl attached to the side so it can't be kicked or run over. So, I mean, those are really good ideas because if you're going to leave your puppy or your dog alone for, you know, even 10 minutes and it bumps it over and then it's bedding and whatever you've got in there is wet, that's not going to be a very pleasant um, situation. Um, Samantha Vandenberg, my GSD is almost 15 months. Is it too late to crate train? Absolutely not. Um, I, I, I think that you can train them at any time. Um, and in fact, if I have dogs that come in here where we're going to do an elective surgery, in other words, it's not an emergency knee op or hip op. So hip dysplasia is one of those we will often um, work the dogs to gain some muscle and some strength before they go for the surgery. One of the first things I advise is, is your, or ask is, is your dog crate trained? Yes or no? If it's a no, I say you now need to consult a behaviorist or a trainer to assist you over the next six to eight weeks prior to the op to actually teach your dog how to be comfortable and unstressed in a crate. So it's not too late. No, not at all. Um, car and stuffed Kong to keep them occupied. Absolutely. Yes, I love that. Um, and we had a client, I'm not a big fan of um, hooves, but we had a client that used to fill hooves with yogurt and then freeze them. Um, and then when the dog came here for its therapy, it had a, um, a chew that kept him occupied for the length of our, of our session. So that, um, that worked very well. So I think you've gathered I'm um, a, a supporter of crates but there are rules there are rules to follow like with everything in life and um, and the big thing is it's not a, an abusive system never punishment you know um, be gentle and take your time and every dog and every puppy is going to have its own framework in which it grows accustomed to the crate okay so we can't say Oh, gee, you know, I've had him walking in and out for a week already. I should actually, you know, be shutting the door already. No, not true. Some dogs, you'll be able to close the door sooner than others. Um, some dogs are going to be okay to leave alone sooner than others. And so this is also about how well do you know your dog? How well do you read the signs? What about calming signals? I did a talk on that. You know, have a look at all of that. 
Um, yes, Eileen, if an overexcited dog when visitors arrive lets the energy settle down. Absolutely. And having said that, um, I have over the years had some friends with some very rowdy um, toddlers and my dogs clearly are not used to small children and um, and to offer them a place where they're going to be safe where the children can't get to them is really really brilliant so you don't want to like I live on a small holding like the kids go crazy here you don't want to stop the children from having a good time by moaning at them all the time and at the same time the dogs would get quite wound up my dogs because they're not used to all the squealing and the excitement okay think about a dog's natural tendency with those kinds of sounds they may view it as prey and so yes if you've got if your dog is crated then he's not stressing about being separate from you or um, trying to you know jump down the door because he's separated from the family he knows that's his place and that's where he stays and he's comfortable um bridget can two dogs share the same crate same age dogs i i think that depends on what you're trying to achieve um because if the two dogs um, are going to wind each other up in the crate, then that's not necessarily what you want. Okay, so I think you need to think carefully about um, what you want. And um, what I do sometimes suggest is, for example, I will often have, as we know, uh, dachshunds with back issues. And, and people who have dachshunds actually have um, usually have more than one. They completely dilly over, over the breed. And Dachshunds are loud and Dachshunds fly off couches and all sorts of things. So um, if I have a Dachshund that's had back surgery and it's got to be crated, in those instances I might say, we'll create a playpen or some area where all of the two or three Dachshunds that are in the family can actually lay together. Um, but I, I don't think that having um, two pups of the same age in one crate is is advisable um, and if any of the more um, experienced people that are watching can comment um, that would be great uh, great Samantha so yeah I, I mean drop us a line on Facebook and let us know how it goes okay and and if you need some help I mean Google it first but um, most behaviorists and most trainers are now very familiar with teaching a dog um, how to be comfortable in a crate so good luck so I just want to check. I don't think there's any more um, questions. I'm just scrolling through. That looks um, strange. Great. Thank you so much for joining me. I will hopefully see some of you or all of you um, next week at 5.30. Great. Thank you very much and have a fantastic evening and enjoy the hot weekend.